it's always a pleasure and honor to have you every Sunday in our Sunday Mass. So we wish you enjoy with us. And look at his nice shirt. Look at and, and it's, you look all really nice. Anyway, it's great to be here. Uh, and I, we apologize. It's probably maybe three, four weeks. We haven't had been able to have mass. Some of it because of the situation here, but also because I had to go to the states two Sundays. One Sunday a priest in Boston at a parish, and another time in Clearwater, Florida. So anyway, it's just it's just good to be here. We've had a difficult week here, though. Uh, we had a soccer football match two days ago and at least 10 people were killed uh they didn't like the the way the game ended i guess but uh they were all innocent people and it, that that makes it very sad uh, we're trying to get ready for school the government says we could open up the schools on october 1st i actually think we should open up earlier but that's that's what they want so anyway but it's it's good to be here and it's Good to celebrate Eucharist with you. And today we're, we're really gifted to be able to have Professor Leonard's who will give us a little reflection after communion. So I hope, I hope he's here now anyway. And uh, Doug actually can't be here. He's in, um, I think, Albany, New York, preaching in a parish. So anyway, it's just, once again, it's just good to be here and it's good to be able to celebrate Eucharist with you. And as I say every time, we are not invited to be spectators but we're invited by jesus himself to participate in this meal and mysteriously we can't use our our concept of time and space in some ways we're at the last supper right now and jesus is looking at each and every one of us and he, he breaks bread and he offers it to us and he basically says i love you as you are and when that spirit, we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And on this new day, may the peace and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of you. We place ourselves in the presence of God, mindful of the great love Almighty God has for each and every one of us, a love that is infinite and absolute, a love that is based not on what we do, but simply for who we are. And we join now in solidarity with people all over the world, and people at the Last Supper as well. We give thanks and we ask God's forgiveness. Lord, you're the source of all beauty. Lord, have mercy. You're the source of the command that you've given us, the mission. Christ, have mercy. You're the source of the bond of love that binds us all together. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in all of us here, forgive us our sins, and bring us to a life that will never end. Amen. Amen. We praise God with the prayer of praise to glory. Glory to God in the highest. My good friends, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of another day, the gift of a new day. We thank you for your presence in our life. Help us, Lord, to recognize and identify your presence. Help us to see and embrace the reality of your presence. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the Old Testament. It's going to be David? Yes. Oh, David's going to do the reading. Okay. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God opens my heart that I may hear. I mean, opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from uh, buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right, if anyone wishes to oppose me. Let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will put me along? The word of the Lord. Thank you, Dave.
The second reading, we've asked our good friend Gary to come forward and to read. What, ge- what good is, is it? My brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you say, to them, go in peace, keep well, and heat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body. What good is it? So, also faith of itself, if it does it not have works, is dead. Glory to God. Okay. Thank you. Gar- Gar's learning English. <laughs> Good friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that I am? They replied in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others sons of the prophets. And he asked them, But who say that I am? Peter said in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them and not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly, and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and one after and after three days he, sp- he spoke this openly. Then Peter said, took him aside, and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around, and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter, and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with the disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the God will save it. 
my good friends, my fellow missionaries, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, once again, it's nice to be here, nice to celebrate Eucharist with you. And um, I, the very last minute, I was trying to find the gospel, so it worked out okay. If you, if you hear me lisping a little bit, last night I, I got a bug that bit me on my tongue, so it was all kind of... I struggle anyway because I was ever blessed with good looks, and this doesn't help any, but anyway, uh, I'll try to do my best. Today's gospel is very powerful, as every gospel is, but part of our faith is that whenever the gospel is proclaimed, Jesus speaks to us. And as you hear me say every, almost every time, whenever we proclaim the gospel and we hear it proclaimed, we don't try to interpret it, but we let the gospel interpret us. As you often hear me say, we look at the sun, we don't try to figure out the sun. We let the rays of the sun touch us. And today, our Lord Jesus, not only is he looking at Peter and the disciples, but he's looking at you and me, and he's saying, who do you say that I am? I have to share a story that's kind of funny. It was about 20 years ago, probably about that time, I was invited to go to Rome, to our mother house, in Rome and it was the first time I had ever been to Europe and I shared this story I think a few times with you but it, remind, it reminds me today because the gospel is something about recognizing our loving God our Lord and I went to Rome and I was all excited plan landed in Rome I got out I felt real proud because I was able to get a taxi and I got inside the taxi and that's the last thing now I remember because apparently a large truck at the airport crashed into the taxi and three days later I'm still in a coma I'm waking up from a coma in St. Eugenia Hospital in Rome and I remember coming out of the coma and looking around 20 beds everybody was dressed in white I didn't know what they were at at the time they were nurses but I didn't know that and they were speaking this language which was Italian and I'm looking around and suddenly I'm saying to myself this is this is heaven this is afterlife and I was like really disappointed I'm like oh my god this isn't good at all look around and then I suddenly began to realize I can't act like I don't like it or they're gonna ask me to leave and send me somewhere else worse so I got a big smile on my face and then suddenly I see this large black figure in this black long dress or gown or whatever it was coming towards my bed. And I'm like, oh my God, this must be God. This is God. Like, oh, or it's St. Peter or somebody. And suddenly the figure leans over at me and says, don't the sue, don't the sue, don't the sue. I didn't know what, what she meant. Later on I, I was told it was the mother of the of the a uh, truck driver who was begging me not to sue him or her son. Anyway, uh, I think of that, that I thought it, at one time at least that large figure was the Lord. And, and in some ways, and I don't, I, I mean, don't mean to be disrespectful, but I'm kind of tied into today's gospel. Because our Lord Jesus is saying to you and to me, who do you think that I am? Who am I to you? Am I real to you? And I think of the words of Thomas, who looked at Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. Our response should be the same, my Lord and my God. But my good friends, my fellow missionaries, it's easy for us to answer that question with my Lord and my God. We're sitting in some beautiful chapel and we're looking at maybe a beautiful stained glass window. We can easily say, my Lord, and my God. Or perhaps we're in a chapel and there's this beautiful choir singing, chanting, and we look up and we see the gold doors on the tabernacle. It's easy to say, my Lord and my God. But what if we're looking at a face grimy with coal dust, 
a face that seems angry, a face of a man stumbling homeward from the mines in Appalachia. What if we have to answer that question to someone bent over in a subway station, reeking of alcohol, cursing at us? What if we have to ask that question to a husband or a wife that has been unfaithful? or to a son or a daughter that's not been grateful for all we may have done for them, or a neighbor who maybe is angry, or a neighbor who's just egotistical or narcissistic and just very difficult to deal with. How difficult that question would be if we tragically have to look at those we call our enemy and say, my Lord and my God. But my fellow missionaries, this is exactly what our Lord Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to embrace the mystery of the Incarnation. He wants us to realize that in every human being, He is indeed present. He wants us to hear and embrace the words of Matthew 25. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, your brothers and sisters, you do to me. Jesus is saying, to you and to me right now, asking our question, who do you say that I am? Our answer may begin in our head or our heart, but we really truly own the answer, and this is, this is uh, affirmed by the other readings in today's Mass. Our response will only be authentic when we respond with our feet. It's where we stand. So, Lord, we can say, my Lord and my God, if we're comfortable. But what we have to maybe do is be able to say, my Lord and my God, when we're standing at the foot of the cross. When we are practicing what I would call unconditional love. The consequence of unconditional love is self-sacrifice and suffering. And if we say, yes, Jesus, I will follow you to Jerusalem. I will go there. We will, um, it's okay, it's all right. <laughs> I thought I was getting kidnapped or something, no. Anyway, we have to follow our Lord Jesus. And we have to follow him unconditionally, which means we have to love others unconditionally. And even if we look at the Catholic laws on marriage. A Catholic Mass, I believe perhaps for other denominations too, but you can never make a prenuptial agreement because a prenuptial agreement will automatically annul the marriage. Better For better, for worse, richer, for poorer. You can't say, I'll marry you if. But we cannot put any conditions on our love and especially our love for Jesus. He's calling us now. And if we say, yes, I'll step forward, Lord, we inevitably will suffer and we will, we will pay the price for answering that call. But this is what our Lord Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to be able to encounter people, perhaps of our Jewish faith, and love them, love them from the bottom of our heart. He wants us to encounter people of our Islamic faith, or the Buddhist faith, or Hindus, and love them with our whole, our whole soul. He wants us to encounter those people who, who everyone is telling us to call enemy, but we, we respond, my Lord and my God, and we respond by loving them, forgiving them, and trying to do good for them. This is what our Lord Jesus is asking of you and to me. Today we have to prayerfully look at what it means to love someone unconditionally. Now, our Lord Jesus, if we are to make his presence real in our life, that the next person we encounter, we should say with joy and enthusiasm, my Lord and my God. And I pray that somehow each and every one of us will be able to have the grace to do that. And I believe if we do that, we will experience deep inner peace. God bless you and God love you.
And please pray for us here because, to be quite honestly, these days have become more and more difficult here in Haiti. But at this time, I like that our Lord has told us to come to Him when we are in need. And let us now present to Him our needs. We pray especially for our Holy Father Francis. Pray, Lord God, you will care for him and watch over him today. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all our staff here, that God will protect them and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all our poor people here, all the people here in, in Haiti, all people, the bad, the peaceful and the violent. We pray for them all. Let us pray to the Lord. David, do you have any special intentions? Yes. Please pray for Kathy Jones as she continues her treatment and to prepare for an upcoming bone marrow transplant. David? Uh, please, please pray for the soul of Dora and that she passes peacefully. Um, please, re please remember Lucille uh, on her birthday. May she be with Christ. Please pray for Dora and her family, um, Holly and Tom. And please pray for Joe, who is seeking employment. We pray to the Lord. Any other special intentions, Dave? No, I think that's all of them. Okay. Anyone have any special intentions here? No, okay, no. Lord God, we ask you to hear these prayers and the prayers and cries of all people throughout the world, especially the cries of people out of fear, perhaps, are afraid to recognize the reality of your presence, are afraid and terrified to be able to say, my Lord and my God. Lord God, we offer our prayers with theirs in solidarity as we wait patiently for your loving consideration. We ask this in union with your Father and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Friends, let us pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice from our name, from our hands, the power and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the church. Lord God, as we offer these simple gifts of bread and wine to you, we offer it to you our personal struggle to follow that invitation that you're giving us to recognize you in every human being, to follow you to our own Jerusalem, to be able to love you unconditionally, 
by loving others unconditionally. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on a cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join now with the angels and the saints of old as we sing together. celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he gathered his friends about him. He looked at them that night, and he loved them. And he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way he took a cup that night, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. death and resurrection. We offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in this body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and our Bishop here, Bishop Messidor, and all the bishops and priests throughout the world. Remember all those people we tragically call our enemy. Remember the men and women of our armed forces, our police, and fire people. Remember all the people here in Haiti who are struggling. Remember our own staff and our teachers and our students. And remember those who have died and have left us. Remember that 10 or 15 or how many have died just the other day at the soccer game. All who have died violently here in Haiti. All who have died alone and forgotten in love. Remember especially John Henderson, Susie Trowbridge. Remember Lucille Bongiovanni, Michelle Miller. Remember Stephen Lomax, Ed Isby. Remember Dee McKee. Remember especially Peter. All the people, our family members and friends who have died. Remember especially Becky DeWine. Bring them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. But through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with St. Francis de Sales and St. Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My good friends, let us now pray to a Father who loves us all. Anu la prière in Creole. Papa notre qui es ciel, c'est pour nous respecter nous, c'est pour nous reconnaître ce qui va, c'est pour volonté ou faire souper à ta pour la ciel. Prenons les uns chaque jour, pas nous les jours d'hier, pas nous les uns nous faire. Pas pour nous pardonner le monde qui fait le chichot, pas quitter nous prendre un piège, mais délivrez-moi ça qui m'a. Deliver us, we beg you, Lord, from every evil, and your mercy keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxieties, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but upon our faith and our goodwill and the love and the beauty that's in each of us, and lead each of us to that kingdom someday where we will live forever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace will become real for us at that moment and only that moment when we say yes to unconditional love. But we say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. And I will recognize you in those people who are difficult to encounter. Recognize you in, in my enemy, our enemy, and people that are difficult. Let us practice doing that now through the sign of peace. Because someone once said, and Doug is always someone that always reminds me of that, that the most sacred space next to the tabernacle is the person closest to us. Let us show our recognition of that now as we share our peace with one another.
Jesus, our best friend and our constant companion, the source of the grace we need to follow him, to love unconditionally. Behold now the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and happy and privileged we are to be called to the supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive so you. hopefully by Professor Leonard. Good morning. Uh, quote, the Lord is the keeper of the little ones. I was little and he delivered me. I was struck by this responsorial psalm from today's readings. Thank you, David, for streaming the photos of the hands together, patient little ones. Oops, let me get to where I need to be so I can read my thing here. Hello. Hang on. David, how do I get out of out of this so I can um is it a different app where your notes are? Uh just well. 
No, it's not on an app. It's just on a document. Uh, hitting escape might close. Good. Thank you. Um, thanks, David, for uh, streaming these photos of hands together's patient little ones. Note especially uh, there will be a, a picture of a young American woman embracing the Haitian boy. There it is. I think that's Doug's daughter. She was part of the Assumption soccer team that visited some time ago. I also thought about the second and even more surprising part of that quote, that I was little and he delivered me. Now, I haven't been little in body since about the fourth grade, but I have often been and still struggle to be little in spirit. This relates to the idea of humility. Blessed are the poor in spirit from the first beatitude. And I trust that he will deliver me and that I can someday share in the kingdom of heaven. Tom and Doug's tireless efforts as the Lord's keepers among these beautiful little ones also strikes a chord with my namesake, James the Lesser, especially his thoughts about the relationship between faith and good works. Sorry, St. Paul and Martin Luther. Quote from St. James, what shall it profit, my brethren, if a man say he have faith, but hath not works? Shall faith be able to save him? But some man will say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. So show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee by works my faith. Tom often reminds us in word and in deed that this tension between faith and works is not the best way to understand the complementary relationship between these two commitments. Rather, what is true is Tom's creed. A dream without a mission is nonsense, and a mission without a dream is drudgery. Hands Together reconciles that dream and mission divinely. Thank you. Oh, Jim, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I go back a long time with Professor Leonard's, and he, he's always been a great inspiration. He, he was a uh, brilliant scholar and graduate from Harvard Law School. He could have chosen all sorts of careers, but he chose to teach, and he was just a great teacher. So thank you, Jim, for, for sharing that with us. Uh, any, I don't know if there's anything else. Just pray for this week. This week we're going to try to get together with all the teachers and, and do some training. I do see my friend, Dr. Mundo. Dr. Mundo was a student you probably introduced before, and now he's working full time in City Soleil. He actually works for uh, Doctors Without Borders, but he's a good doctor, and, and he and he knows English. You can say a few words. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be with you this morning to participate with our Sunday mass. Uh, thank you so much to be with you. And he knows other English too, like whenever I go to him, if I'm not feeling well, he says, well, do you have insurance? Because you're going to have to pay me. You always say that, you know? <laughs> anyway, okay. we have all these others, so I'd love to introduce some of them, maybe a couple at a time. How about we bring Big Sergo over here? Sergo. Sergo is in charge of a program called the Credit Program, because we realize now the students when they receive education free, they kind of think they don't have enough respect. So starting this year, they will have to earn credits. They'll get a credit in community service, a credit in academia, a credit in, uh, in arts and, uh, not arts and culture and that type of thing. But we're really gonna ask a lot of them. And Sergo's running that. And he's also in charge of the uh, couple other things you're doing. Anyway. Anyway, if you want. He um, speaks English. Go <laughs> ahead, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. That's it? Oh, we, all right, that was his English. That's pretty good. 
And Mango, Mango, come here. Mango is in charge of all art and culture and music. So we call him Mango, that's his nickname. But Mango, you want to say a few words or anything? Yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So my name is Peterson Simeon. It was a pleasure to me to be there with you uh, this, for this Sunday Mass. Uh, I want to, I would like to, to be with you every Sunday. Thank you. Wow, he's pretty good. <laughs> he was the, when he went to our school, you were the president, right? Uh, no. No? no you were yeah. something. Yeah. Anyway, he spoke at graduation. Yes. I was always touched because what he spoke about was his gratitude to his mother. Yes. Thank so anyway, you so Mango's a good person. Yes. Oh, if there's you. anybody else up here. Well, Reggie, Reggie, you want to come forward? <laughs> I, I am TM. <laughs> Reggie is in charge of security, and he does a good job. And he had another life at one time, but he's changed his ways. He's a good man. Anyway, but every every Sunday, maybe we'll, we'll try to introduce a few of our, our staff people. Anyway, let us now end with a prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this Mass today. We thank you for the gift of this day. And as we leave here, Lord, let us struggle with that question that you're giving us. Do you recognize me? Who am I? Help us, Lord, to respond with a willingness to live unconditional love, to look at all human beings and love them unconditionally, to forgive our enemies and do good to those who hurt us. Help us to be able to do that, realizing that we may have to experience a great deal of self-denial and sacrifice. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May this end it go in peace, and God bless you, and God love you. Thanks be to God.